until the moment comes <coughs> when we, the Americans, we, the American people, are able to accept the fact that I have to accept, for example, that my ancestors are both white and black, that on that continent we are trying to forge a new identity for which we need each other, and that I am not a ward of America. I am not an object of missionary charity. I am one of the people who built the country. Until this moment, there is scarcely any hope for the American dream, because the people who are denied participation in it by their very presence will wreck it. That was author and civil rights activist James Ball was speaking in 1965 at the University of Cambridge in England. Folks will now have the opportunity to learn much more about Baldwin and his work. That's because New York's Schomburg Center for Research in Black Culture has acquired Baldwin's personal archives. The archive includes a treasure trove of Baldwin's letters and manuscripts, as well as drafts of his essays and novels and photographs documenting the writer's life. Joining us from via Skype from New York is the Schomburg Center's director, Kevin Young. Kevin, how you doing? Good, how you doing? Now, uh, the, the Baldwin family, uh, you know, they are very meticulous uh, in holding on to and, and cradling his legacy. Uh, and so of, of, of the archive that you guys have, uh, what will people be able, to, uh, be able to access? Are there some things they won't be able to access that are still under lock and key? Well, you'll be able to see 30 feet uh, of his material. Um, everything from all of his writings from the first book, Go Tell It on the Mountain, his novel, to his last work and even some unfinished work, uh, unpublished. Uh, he was working on a book called The Welcome Table when he died. There's a few letters, uh, less than a foot of that, that's sort of the archival term, uh, that will be restricted for a few years, but um, you know, that's pretty typical and, and we're just excited to open what we can open and show people his writing life and process. So you talk about these letters, I mean, are, are, are they personal correspondence with different individuals? Yeah, it's letters with uh, friends and family, uh, including his brother. Um, so, you know, the, 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 nothing has been seen till now, which is what's so powerful about all this. We haven't seen these drafts. We haven't seen uh, these photographs. We have photo albums. All that is open today uh, for you all to come and see at Schomburg Center. So uh, for, for the for a person out there uh, who's unfamiliar with archives, unfamiliar when people turn over their papers, uh, what does this really mean? You know, what, what, what insight can we gain from being able to look at personal letters? I think you can see the whole person. You get to see the you know, their private thoughts, their jottings, you know, some of my favorite things are, uh, we have a series of uh, notes he made about Buford Delaney, a good friend of his, that are on the back of, you know, a card for a bar that says two drink minimum, you know. So you get to see his life up close and you get to see, you know, what he was interested in, in terms of writing. Um, you get to see how he wrote, um, how meticulous he is. You see draft after draft on legal pads of his writing out his novels. The other thing that's amazing to me uh, as a writer myself is seeing how complete some of these early drafts are. Um, you know, he, he's writing for page after page without a cross out, you know, and if we're used to computers and used to not seeing someone's hand, you get to really see uh, how he worked, see his, you know, you were touching something that he touched because we're not a museum, we're an archive. You can come and look at it, you can handle the material. Uh, we think that's really important. Jameer? Yeah, I recently saw the the, um, the movie I'm Not Your Negro of James yeah. Baldwin, and I thought it was phenomenal because it really laid the foundation that you don't have to be an activist to really um, be a part of the movement and that there's something to be said about telling the stories. And so I'm curious from your perspective, having seen all of this, um, his archive, what do you think it means for this current space that we're in considering um, the black community? I think Baldwin was prophetic. Uh, you know, he was always a prophet of race of America in that clip you just played, you hear him talking about, you know, uh, black folks aren't a ward, but are part of the building of this country. And that kind of uh, question is still, many people don't understand. And I think he's such at the center of uh, our discussions today about race, about Black Lives Matter, uh, about the future of both politics and the personal 
um, that he's so smart about it that it, it, he just is everlasting and ever present as a figure. I'm excited about the prophetic dimension. When I was growing up, we heard a lot from him. How do you think his legacy will be impacted by this amplification of his work? I think we'll return as you hear in the movie. I mean, I think the film, what it does is it captures him as a thinker and as a writer. You get to hear his words, you know, and also realize his connection to the movement, uh, which we don't always, I think, you know, younger folks don't always think about. Um, there's one of the most powerful things that's on display now. Uh, we have a short pop-up that's going up through this weekend, uh, through Monday. So please come uptown uh, and see it at Schomburg Center at 135th. Um, but we also, you know, one of the things that's in that is a document where he's writing 10 years after Martin Luther King's assassination about hearing the news by phone. And, you know, what a powerful thing of his account of seeing his, hearing his friend had been murdered. And this, uh, as Nina Simone, who was another one of his friends, the king of love is dead. And yeah. that's just a powerful moment. Barbara? Yes. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm so excited because the Schaumburg Center has acquired this amazing archive, and it's going to be so important. And I'm really pleased with what you've been doing on public engagement and right. how you have been really making sure that the public is, um, you know, involved in this so I'm very interested on in what are some of your future plans a forum on Baldwin uh, what are you thinking about about bringing in the public because people don't understand that you can't appreciate and understand American race relations without reading James Baldwin Kevin 30 seconds you, you nailed on the head you know <laughs> we're having many events uh, one of the next ones is May 17th we're having a uh, there's a republication of the fire next time his <sighs> really important book, come through, see uh, the photographs that are in this new edition. Um, that's one event, but you know, we're also proud that he's come home to Harlem. Yes. Uh, Baldwin's mm -hmm. home is now the home of his archive, and I think that's really important. And we want folks to come in. It, well, like I said, we're an archive, not a museum. We want people to use this material, experience it, and see firsthand, students to scholars to just people passing awesome. by. So please come so through. Awesome. All right, Kevin, we appreciate it, man. Thanks a lot. Awesome. All right, anytime. See you soon. A peaceful protest turned deadly. 37-year-old black man was shot to kill by Baton Rouge police. His hands are in the air and you still get shot by the cops. Oh my God, please don't tell me he's dead. We're not gonna let hate define us. Race is a big part of this. If truly all lives matter, then all lives need to matter equally. What we require is action. What we require is accountability. We understand that black lives do matter. And we will keep focused on this issue. News One Now, every weekday morning at seven on TV One.